In today's competitive world of data science, being interview ready means more than just knowing how to code and analyze data. Whether you are applying for a role like data science intern, data science analyst, or aiming higher as an ML engineer or data scientist, it's essential to be prepared for the kind of questions hiring managers actually ask. In this video, we'll walk through the top 10 data science interview questions that often come up. Questions designed to test your understanding, your problem solving approach, and your ability to explain your thinking clearly. So whether you are just getting started or brushing up before an interview, this guide will give you the edge you need. Let's jump right in. So the first question any interviewer expects you to know is what are the assumptions of linear regression? When such a question comes, you should be able to speak of five main assumptions. That is linearity, independence, homoscedasticity, errors follow normal distribution, and no multicollinearity. Linearity simply means there is a linear relationship between independent and dependent variables. In independence, you must explain residuals or errors are independent of each other. In homoscedasticity, you should explain that the variance of residuals is constant across all levels of the independent variable. And in normality of errors, you should be able to explain how and why are residuals normally distributed. And finally, in no multicollinearity, you should be able to explain that independent variables are not highly correlated with each other. Just a quick note, Analytics Vidya has 100 plus free courses from beginner to advanced on topics like machine learning, generative AI, agents, etc. Complete with certification. Click the I button to explore now. The next favorite question for any interviewer is the role of sigmoid function and log loss in logistic regressions. Now, since logistic regression is the most basic classification algorithm, it is expected that you should know it. So to answer this question, first you should be able to explain sigmoid function and how logistic regression uses the sigmoid function to convert the linear output into a probability. Similarly, when it comes to log loss, you should be able to explain how it measures errors by comparing predicted probabilities to actual class labels. Then you can state the impact, which is log loss heavily penalizes confident but wrong predictions. And then as a disadvantage, you can state that it is sensitive to outliers. The next question you should be prepared for is, which algorithms should you use or avoid when there are too many variables in your data set? So here, you need to give a list of recommended algorithms and the algorithms you should avoid in such a scenario. Under the recommended algorithms, you can mention lasso and tree-based models. You should also give the reasons on why these algorithms are recommended in such a scenario. Since lasso is recommended because it performs built-in feature selection, while the tree-based models such as random forest and XGBoost can handle irrelevant features relatively well. And when it comes to the algorithms you must avoid, the number one thing is KNN and then SVM. You should also be prepared with the reasons. For both, you can state that the performance degrades when there are too many dimensions. Now, the reason why an interviewer would ask this question is to check your understanding as a data science candidate and see if you think before you use a model or just randomly test your luck. Ideally, you should be able to answer this question keeping in mind which model provides you maximum speed. Another favorite question of every interviewer is what is random in random forest? So you should explain that the word random refers to two key sources of randomness that keep the model robust and less prone to overfitting. The first source of randomness is from random sampling of data which is called backing. That is, each tree is trained on a random subset of the training data selected with replacement. Then you should explain the second source of randomness, that is random subset of features, which simply means that at each split in a decision tree, a random subset of features is considered instead of all features. Now you should also explain what is the purpose of this. Here you can simply say that 
these randomizations create a diverse set of decision trees, reducing overfitting and variance. Now, another question you should prepare for is how to treat imbalanced data. Now, as data science aspirants, we all know that in real world classification data, there might be a chance that a particular class might have a lot of observations while another class may have very few observations. In such a scenario, you should be able to explain that imbalanced data sets will lead to poor performance on minority class. And then you should jump to the techniques directly. So you can mention resampling techniques such as using oversampling, which includes moat to increase minority class or undersampling to reduce majority class. Then when it comes to algorithmic solutions, one thing you can state is to use the class weight parameter and set it to balanced for the classification algorithms. Or you can also use F1 score as your evaluation metric when you are dealing with imbalanced data. Now, this might be the most favorite question for any interviewer, that is, what is gradient descent? Now, you should start with answering with a basic definition that is gradient descent is an optimization algorithm used to minimize a loss function by iteratively updating model parameters in the direction of the negative gradient. Then you should be able to explain how gradient descent calculates the gradients of loss with respect to weight and updates the weights to reduce error. Then the purpose which is to help find the optimal model parameters that minimize the loss function then you should also explain components like momentum, which introduces a moving average of past gradients to smooth out updates and speed up convergence. Then you should state the impact, which is it reduces oscillation and helps escape local minima. Now, another question you should prepare for is the difference between bagging and boosting algorithms. You can start saying that bagging and boosting are both ensemble methods that improve model performance by combining multiple learners and then you can jump to the differences. When it comes to bagging, it trains models in parallel on randomly sampled data subsets and aggregates their outputs. For example, random forest. But when it comes to boosting, it trains models sequentially where each model learns from the errors of the previous one. For example, Adaboost and XGBoost. Then you should be able to explain the purpose of these algorithms. That is, bagging is used to reduce variance while boosting is used to improve the accuracy. Now, another favorite question during interviews is what are transformers? As someone who has spent at least five years in this industry, I cannot emphasize how important transformers has been in changing the entire artificial intelligence landscape. Since transformers are the backbone of LLMs, it becomes absolutely crucial that any data science aspirant knows the entire transformers architecture. So when such a question comes, you should be able to explain that it is a neural network architecture, and then you should jump to the key components, which are the encoder-decoder architecture, various attention mechanisms, positional encoding, and feed-forward layers. Now, when it comes to the features, you should be able to explain clearly how, unlike RNNs, transformers enable parallel processing, which helps it handle long-range dependencies effectively. Then you should also explain the different types of attention mechanisms, especially self-attention and how it computes attention within a sequence using query, key and value vectors to capture relationships among all positions. And you should also emphasize on how impactful Transformers has been with the examples of BERT, GPT, DeepSeq, Gemini, etc. Now, another question you should be prepared for is what is CNN or convolutional neural network. Now you should explain that a CNN is a type of deep learning model designed to automatically extract and learn patterns from spatial or grid-like data such as images. You should be able to explain the key components involved that is the convolutional layers, pooling layers and fully connected layers. Then you should explain its function that is to learn hierarchical features which includes edges and textures of an image. Then you should state the impact, that is, it reduces manual feature engineering by learning features directly from the raw data. And then you can also state the disadvantage, 
That is, it requires large data sets and high computational resources for effective training. And the final question in this video is open-ended. It is about the data science projects you have contributed to or you have built. The sole intention for the interviewer to ask this question is to check if you are a go-getter, if you are not just learning, but applying what you learn to real world problems or even dummy data sets. Projects serve as a proof of work to the interviewer. It helps establish the fact that you not only apply what you have learned, but it also establishes that you are someone that can learn new things on the go. And that's it. And there you have it. Mastering these questions is more than just interview prep. It's about strengthening your foundation as a data science professional. From key concepts like model evaluation to essential strategies for dealing with messy or imbalanced data. These topics reflect real world challenges you will face on the job. We have added the links to helpful resources in the description. So be sure you explore further. Stay curious, stay updated and remember, your answers reflect not just your knowledge, but your thinking, clarity and vision for data driven future. Best of luck on your data science journey. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.